You're listening to the 43rd edition of the Bitachan podcast. And we continue in the Sefer Beis Halevi on Bitachan. Says the Beis Halevi, an important thing to understand. And of course, we're talking about a, a high level, a level which we can all strive for. And these are normal things to experience. But the Beis Halevi is giving us an approach to life, an approach to Bitachan. And he says that fearing a human being comes from the fact that we've forgotten Hashem. The concept of fear from a human being is explained in the verse, that it comes from forgetting Hashem. As the Pasuk says in Yeshaya, it's in uh, chapter 51, verse 12. Who are you that you fear from a human being who's going to die? From a human being that's going to be like the grass, it's going to be something that ends up in the, in the earth. And you forgot Hashem who created you. The one who planted the heavens, founded the earth, and you were constantly afraid. The Pasuk is telling us that there's an obligation to recognize that our fears are not necessary. Why are they not necessary? Because everything that happens to us is from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is the thing that he's going to have over the duration of this podcast. If a person would place in his heart that all that's in the world, every single thing that happens, whether it's good or whether it's seemingly not as good, every single thing comes from Hashem. No human being has the ability to change the gzer, the decree of Hashem. It's very interesting, it's an important thing to understand, especially as I've mentioned recently, we're facing off with Omicron, we're facing off with Corona. You might be listening to this long after Corona is around, but there's always something that we're facing off with, whether it's on an individual level or on a national level. And it's so easy to think that I'm in control or I try to be in control. And we see we were all involved, and of course we should be involved in uh, taking a vaccine, if that's what our Rabbanim tells us to do. But we need to know that nothing, nothing in this world can happen without the gzera, from the except for the decree of Hashem. Even the, the smallest thing, even the kechud shal machat, the size of a pin, you can't make something come earlier or later, even for a moment. You can work on a music album, you want it to come out by a certain time. It's going to come out at the moment. The music, the song, the product, the project, it's going to be completed at the moment that Hashem wants it to be completed. Like the Pesach says, Hashem is one. God is one. And who can... Who can Turn back God's will. It says the base Halevi, therefore a person should never be afraid of a, of a human being. Like we saw the verse that he brought last week. God is mine, I have nothing to be afraid of. What can a human being do to me? No human being can affect me. Only HaKadosh Baruch Hu has chosen, He has decreed, and that's where the effect comes from. But from nowhere else. Who Yashkit, who me are Shia. Pasik says, He shall be quiet. Let's see. Ah. When Hashem grants a person quiet, who Yashkit, who can cause that person to have a lack of quiet? Who can cause him to have turmoil? So the idea is every single thing that a Kodesh Baruch Hu decrees, every single thing that happens to a person is, is, is as a result of his decree. And he says something really important and it's very interesting, very difficult to understand, perhaps hard to relate to, but nevertheless, we need to. Let's say a person finds themselves under the control of an evil person. Heaven forbid. The person needs to recognize and realize that every single thing is from Hashem. The person that is 
exacting any kind of justice upon the person, causing any pain to the person. He's just a stick in the hands of God, as it were. Like the verse says, Hoy Ashur So verse in Isaiah, in chapter 10, verse 5, God speaks to the country of Assyria, who were bringing about a negative consequence upon the Jewish people for something they had done wrong. And Hashem refers to them as the, the, the stick of my anger. Don't think you, the oppressor even, Hashem is speaking to the oppressor, to Ashur, to Assyria. Don't even think that you have any power. Pasuk there says, furthermore, in, in, in uh, Pasuk Tesvav, verse 15, can the, can the axe think he's greater than the one who wields the axe, than the woodsman? It's ridiculous, right? HaKadosh Baruch is the one who holds the Shevet, which is the stick of retribution, the stick of Musa, HaKadosh Baruch is not an evil uh, God who wishes to strike us with great violence, heaven forbid. Rather, sometimes we've done things wrong. Sometimes Hashem wants to bring us a good that we don't deserve. So He brings about a, uh, a difficult situation. It reminds me of the story of Gershon Liebman. Gershon Liebman was a Talmud of the altar of Navardic. And during, during World War II, he was in concentration camps. After World War II, he proceeded to live in France and open up, I think, 10 or 11 institutions, Navardic institutions. An incredible force. An incredible force for Musser, for Taira, for Yiddishkeit. In the war, he saw, he was, for some reason, he was there inside of the Nazis, in the place where they were eating their food, and he, and he saw that they had used the talus as a, as a tablecloth. And as soon as he saw it, he ran over and he grabbed away the talus, ripped it off the table. And the Nazis who saw him do this, they were incensed that this Jews, how could he have such audacity? And they beat him to a pulp. They left him for dead. Afterwards, he was in a pile of corpses. And somebody found him and, and pulled him out and saved him, heard that he was still breathing, saved his life. But it's an extreme story of Bitachen, an extreme story where the person realizes, Grib Gershon Liebman understood that if it's his time to go, it's, he's going to go. But he was not afraid to stand up for what was right. And indeed, he went on to become a tremendous, tremendous mashpil, a toiv on Klai Yisrael. Yim Kain says the Beis Halevi, if so, when a person tries to figure things out, tries to beg the guy who's, the, the person who's coming to hurt him, please don't, please don't hurt me, please this is like someone who's getting struck, who's getting hit, and he davens, he, or, or he, he appeals to the stick that he's being hit with, and, saying to the, and he says to the stick, please don't strike me. There's no greater foolishness than this. Right? So it sounds kind of hopeless. And then, what can I do? What can I do? I can't, I can't ask the person for mercy. But the point here is that it's HaKadosh Baruch who is God. Every single thing that occurs to us, whether for good or not, not so good. It's all from God, it's all from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And so, to whom do we need to turn? To whom do we need to place our trust? To whom do we need to pray and supplicate and beg for mercy? It's to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to God, not to the human being that stands in front of us. Pasuk says, from one side we have Aram, the Arameans, from the other side, we have the Plishtim, the Philistines, who wish to hurt us. And they cause us damage with each and every mouth. Says the verse, but instead of looking at who is striking us with our enemies, who's the one behind, who, who allows the enemies to have power, to wield power over us? To whom are we turning? We can't turn to, the, to our might to our nuclear, our own nuclear arsenal to protect us. We can't turn to all of our, our, the IDF, our, our Air Force. We need to recognize that if there's something, there's a challenge that's being set in front of us, it's from Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to recognize that He is behind it all. He wants us to return to Him. 
He wants us to recognize that the decree is from Him. He wants us to trust in Him. As we saw last week, the reason that negative things come is because we haven't trusted in Him, and that opens the door for a negative reality, heaven forbid. The, the only solution is not to trust in ourselves, not to be mischalin, to, to beg for mercy from our enemies, but rather not to, not to depend even on, on others who might stand by our side. Says the Beis HaLevi, not only does supplicating and, and requesting mercy from the stick itself not help, it causes damage, because we're missing the point. We're missing to whom we should really be supplicating. Okay, so that's point number one. That's the first concept. And I'd like to spend a little bit more time on the next point, where he speaks about the mon. The mon, of course, we know. Recently we read, from the, many have read, from the Parsha Samon. The Parsha of the mon, the concept of the mon, has to do with the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is providing for us in every moment, Every single moment, he's the one who's providing for us. And the man, of course, is only during that 40 years of the midbar, but it represents, the Torah writes things, Lidaris, right? we read this every single year, we read this, Parshat B'Shalach, we read about the man. It's a story, which is not just a one-time story, but it's in recognition of the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu behaves with us, he interacts with us, better said, in the same way as he did then, he, he, he interacts with us now. Also, when it comes to a person's livelihood, all of a person's awareness and his efforts do not help him at all. <laughs> this, is, this sounds very much like the altar of Navardic. You can't get more than is decreed upon you. HaKadosh Baruch Hu decrees on a person exactly how much money they're going to have, how their needs are going to be fulfilled. We can... We can try and try and put in his shtadlis until our face turns blue. But it doesn't change the decree. The Pesach says in regards to the man, that when a person went out and collected more of the man, or a person collected less of the man, he still ended up with the same amount. It didn't matter. The man was a, an indication for all generations. What happened to them happens to us. We're the same human beings, we're the same souls as those original souls who were there in the time of the Midbar, in the time of the wilderness. This teaches us that the efforts that we put in do not help us at all in order to get more. If, if, if there's a decree for a certain amount, that's how much we get. Says the Beis HaLevi, Not only does the efforts that we put in not advance receiving that which we would desire, that which we wish. Sometimes it causes the exact opposite. Person sees with their own senses that the efforts do not help at all. Excuse me. They can affect a person negatively. And it turns out that when a person puts in efforts, too much efforts for sure, but it seems that he's saying even any efforts at all, when a person puts in efforts, so the result is that it can be to his detriment. It can adversely affect. He can lose, like we saw when it comes to trying to prevent something negative from occurring and not trusting in Hashem, that causes the negative thing to come. So too, when it comes to Parnassah, putting in too much effort shows that a person doesn't recognize, doesn't believe that it's ultimately only from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's only from Hashem. And if that's the case, he can cause himself damage. He can cause himself to lose that which was decreed upon him. Like the verse says, The verse refers to these types of eggs, of a, uh, different types of animals. Spiders, a person who eats from their eggs, they will die, and the the eggs will hatch, and destruction will come about. What is the idea? Dima The pasuk in Yeshaya, Perkin Test, pasuk fifty nine five, 
It's teaching us that when a person puts in effort, too much effort, a person is trying to gather together eggs in order to eat, in order to have that which he needs. And he heats them up, warms them, in order to be able to have chickens, in order to eat. So he's doing all of this effort. It turns out that what were these eggs? He thought that they were chicken eggs. But in fact, they were eggs of a snake. So he's explaining that the verse means that he put in all of these efforts in order to attain his livelihood, in order to attain the food that he needs. But instead, what came out was that he had just heated up the eggs of a snake because he didn't recognize what kind of eggs that they were. And that just caused him damage. So we see that a person, the, the verse is openly saying that the hishtadlis of a person, the efforts of a person can destroy him, can cause him to fall, can cause him to be damaged, to lose out that which was even decreed for him. The Pesach says in Eiv that that the wise people are sometimes, they are caught, they are entrapped, they are ensnared by their very wisdom, by their craftiness. Their very efforts to try to figure out how can I get my, how can I get my parnasa, how can I get the, the money that's coming to me. Instead of being, well, what does Hashem want me to do? It's a very different approach. What is Hashem's will for me? What does Hashem wish for me to do? How can I make a Kiddush Hashem in the world? How can I bring about a sanctification of God's name in the world? What is it that Hashem wants me to accomplish? When a person is trying to figure out his goal is the money, his goal is the Parnassah, which is not even in his hands, that's where he gets entrapped and ensnared. Like the story of the servants of Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon. The Gemara in Sukkot tells us, King Solomon met, it was a great story, King Solomon met the servants of Shlomo HaMelech. He saw that the, the angel of death looked upset, and King Solomon said to him, Why are you, why are you upset? And he said, Well, I need to get these two particular servants of yours to a certain place, but they're, they're not going there. I can't kill them. So Shlomo Melech realized that Malach Amavis is ready to get these guys, so he takes them and he sends them to Luz. Luz was a place where the Malach Amavis didn't have power. It was a particular city. As soon as they got, before they got into the city, as they got to the gates of Luz, that's where the Malach Amavis got them. He needed them to get to the gates of Luz in order to kill them. The next time Shlomo Melech sees the Malach Amavis, he sees that he's happy. He says, why are you happy? He says, the place where I needed them to get to was where they got to. You sent them there. So Shlomo HaMelech understood, and we all understand, that if it's a person's time to go, they're going to go. They're going to get to that place where they need to be. You're going to be standing next to the person who has the sickness that they need to go from, heaven forbid. But the idea is, you can't fight the decree. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one who makes the decree. You can't fight it with his shtadlis. A person is supposed to get a certain amount of money. A person is supposed to get a certain amount of wealth or, or not. That's dependent not on, the, on, on anybody outside of him, only about his relationship with God. So the powerful lesson here is the importance of not believing that it's dependent on anybody else, any human being. Not believing that it's dependent on ourselves, on our own ishtadlis, our own, our, our own efforts. But rather recognizing constantly, consistently, that everything comes from Hashem. It's only Hashem. I must share with you a story that happened to me this past week. Every tenth of the month, I have a certain amount of money that needs to come out. You may have heard this from me before. Every tenth of the month, I have a certain amount for my mortgage, for different bills, etc. Stuff comes out of my business. The fifteenth of the month, there's other things. The twentieth of the month, you know, different dates. I have a calendar. My being aware of it, my being aware of when the money needs to come helps me to be willing to do what I believe Hashem wants me to do to earn that money. And it also reminds me every month that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is there helping me, providing for me. And it came the 15th of the month this month, which was Friday, and I couldn't find the money. I couldn't, it wasn't, didn't seem to be there. Now, I've been committed in this way to be talking and to awareness around my finances a long time. 
solid, solid number of years. And it always works. Kodesh Baruch Hu always sends it. It always works. So I knew it had to be there, but I couldn't find, I could not find where is the money that Kodesh Baruch Hu has for me. The money's always, either I've already received it or there's some work that I need to do that's, that's coming up. It was a particular thing. I thought maybe that's the thing that I need to do. I didn't feel like that was the right thing for me. And then I came upstairs. I was talking to my wife. I said, trying to find this money. Sorry, you know, person has a riffian in Bitachan. Trying to find this money is like trying to squeeze water out of a rock. That's the language that I, use, that I used. And as I said that, it hit me that I was calculating the amount of money in my bank account based on a certain certain amount that came into my account from the, from the IRS for child allowances, etc., different things. And that money had to stay there. I couldn't use that money. But I forgot that there was a certain amount that I had paid out of my business in order to, uh, to pay my accountant to submit these, the information to the IRS. And I was supposed to get that money back. I was supposed to... I was able to use that money, and it turned out to be the exact amount that I needed. Bottom line, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if we trust in Him, it's nigs are in us we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have a certain amount. We have to pay our bills. As I said in the Parsha podcast, It's very hard, it's very difficult. We have to pass through the fire sometimes in order to receive what we're meant to receive. We have to go through that difficulty. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is revealing Himself to us. The question is, do we fight it and try to pull it and grab it ourselves? Or do we go straight to the source? Do we go straight to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to God, in order to make sure that He, that he will provide us? He will take away any negative things that we think might be coming because we have trusted in Him. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you again next time.